In this video we're going to look at the algebraic proof of the Pythagoras theorem and compare it to the geometry. And we're going to see how each of these terms match up with the geometry of this shape here. So we said that we can work out the area of the large square by multiplying a plus b times a plus b. And this is written here. And whenever we multiply these out, we're going to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared equals that area. Now we also said that we can look at the area of this large square here in terms of the area c squared, which is the black square here. And we can add on the area of these four pink triangles. The area of each triangle is going to be a half base times height, so it's going to be a half AB. So we've got a half AB, a half AB, a half AB and a half AB. So if we add these four together, in total we're going to get two AB. So this little geometric shape here tells, it the, it tells us that the area of the large square is 2AB plus C squared. Now, the other bit of our algebra here tells us that it's also equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, we can get to this point here by moving the triangles within this shape. But we have to be very careful about how we move them. For example, if I was to take one of the triangles and, for example, move it outside, then you can see here that this area c squared is no longer c squared, it's actually larger. In effect, the black area has become larger. So we can't just move the triangles outside the remit here of our original rectangle. Now another thing we can't do is whenever we move the triangle, we can't move them so that they sit on top of each other. Because if I move this triangle up here, for instance, you can see there's an overlap here. So if there's an overlap here, again, this black area here is no longer c squared. It has increased. But we can move the triangles so that they do not leave the original large square and also they do not overlap. So for, inst for instance, I could take this triangle here and I could shift it up onto this space here. So let's do that now. So you can see, even though I have moved this triangle, the black area has changed shape. But because I haven't moved the pink triangle outside the square and I haven't overlapped with any other pink triangle, it means that the black square here is actually the same area. It's still C squared, but the shape of it has changed. Now, I can also move the this triangle here over to here and I can shift this one down. So let's do that now. So we can shift this over here and we can shift this one down. So again, there has no triangle has left the original square and there's no overlap. So it means that the black area here is still C squared. But again, it's just a different shape. So we know the black area is c squared, but this area here is going to be a, the length a. Now we can forget about this b here now because this b and a no longer uh, mean the same things because we've shifted the blocks about. So this length here is a and this length here is also a. So this area here must be a squared. And then we have the longer area here, which is B, and this area here is length is B. So this area here must be B squared. But we've said that the black area 
although it's changed shape, is still the same value, which is c squared. So we've got here c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And also, you can see here that these two equations hold, because we've seen this one previously. Now this one here is going to be the area a squared plus the area b squared, and this 2ab is just going to be the area of a times b and a times b. So again, we can shift everything back to the way it was previously. And we can see here that we've got back to what we had from the start, which was our c squared plus our 2ab. Now this is a nice little proof of Pythagoras theorem, and it relates the geometric motivation here with the actual algebraic proof.